Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Caitlin Smith, your webinar host from Main Street ROI. We are very excited to be hosting our first webinar with Hello Bar. For today's webinar, we're excited to welcome Lindsay Mirando, Director of Marketing at Hello Bar. Um, the presentation should be about 45 to 50 minutes so that we can leave time for Q&A at the end. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, go ahead and shoot them over and we'll get back to them at the end of the webinar. As always, today's webinar will be recorded and we'll send out a replay video along with the PDF of the slides to everyone who signed up. So if you get calls or are pulled away for work, don't worry, you're not gonna miss a thing. With that, I will turn the webinar over to Lindsay so she can get started. Awesome, thank you so much. Can you guys hear me okay? If you don't mind letting me know in the chat, I uh, always wanna make sure that the volume's okay for you. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, and really excited to hear from you guys along the way. Feel free to ask questions, we'll answer them all in the end. Um, and I wanna make sure that you get everything out of today that you need. Um, so I have a first question before we begin, because I wanna make sure I use examples that pertain to your style of business. Go ahead and type in the chat. You should see the little chat box over um, in your screen. And I wanna hear what industry are you in? Are you in e-commerce? Are you a consultant? Um, do you have a blog? Maybe it's a combination. Maybe you have a brick and mortar physical location, um, a marketing agency, a coaching business. Share in the chat um, and let me know what type of business you have. I really want to, again, make sure that you get the most out of today. So I'm going to wait a second. It might be a little delayed. Um, Kaylin, can you hear me okay? just want to make sure I'm... <laughs> Yep, you sound perfect on my end. Okay, wonderful. Okay, cool. Um, well, I will wait. Don't be shy, you guys, um, to type in the chat. Um, super excited to see what you uh, put out there. And I'll wait for you guys to do that, or I'll keep going, and then I'll kind of um, take a look and peek and see what you put in. But really, again, want to hear your industry, what style of business you have, and make sure to type it in the chat. So you guys have signed up for why 98% of your website visitors aren't converting into leads, but more importantly, how to make sure that they actually convert into leads, right? That's what this is, what's so valuable about today and what's so important for you. So hopefully this will actually let me keep moving along. So a little bit more about me. I don't like to spend too much time here because I want to make the most out of our time together. Um, but as Kayla mentioned, my name is Lindsay Mirando. I'm the head of marketing um, for Hello Bar and also another tool, uh, Subscribers. Hello Bar is a tool that helps you collect more leads on your website. Subscribers is a web push notification tool that helps you bring back people back to your website. Um, and funny story about my background. So I've been in marketing since 2002. Um, so almost 17 years, which is really crazy to think about. So originally, my first job was actually collecting email addresses in a bar on Monday Night Football for a raffle. Um, so very different and antiquated way to grow your list. But it was really cool because I got to see what email look, marketing looked like then and what it's developed and grown into today. And back then, we were building websites on Flash. Um, everything was very antiquated. So it's really cool to see how far we've come today. Um, so enough about me. Um, I want to dive in. Um, as I mentioned, what the heck is Hello Bar? Hello Bar is a lead generation tool. Most people know us for our top bar, um, which you see on websites that says enter your email address in here to grab X, Y, and Z guide. But we actually have a lot more than just top bars. We've got modal, sliders, alert bells, and page takeovers. I really think about Hello Bar as a sales assistant on your website. It supports you in making sure you are achieving whatever goal you have for your site. And that's really what we're gonna be talking about today, right? What goals do you have for your site? How do we take that 98% of people that are leaving your site and getting them to stay? Um, so I'm really gonna talk that through today and then in the end I'll show you how Hello Bar can support you in doing that as well. And why the heck do we exist? Um, so Hello Bar actually exists um, because 11 years ago our co-founder uh, Neil Patel found the software and he absolutely loved it. He was spending a ton on developers and designers to create pop-ups on a site to collect leads, all to find out that he didn't know if it was gonna work um, and he had just wasted thousands of dollars. So when he found Hello Bar and realized it was a simple, easy to use tool and very affordable, he was very excited and ended up acquiring it. So now we have this really powerful tool that exists. So there's a few problems that exist um, today in the marketplace that I want to go over. 
The first problem is that 96% of consumers who land on your website are not ready to buy yet, right? So that's why we're seeing this 98% of people leaving without taking any action because people aren't ready to buy. You're not giving them incentive to take action. We'll talk about what that looks like today. So imagine if you actually collected their information, right? You could actually get a hold of them again and you can ensure that, you know, for obviously not all 96%, but a good amount um, that you could get their, your product in their hands. So I want you to think about the last time you actually bought a product, okay? What was your buyer journey? What did you do before you bought the product? Did you hop onto a website, then hop onto another website, look at a bunch of reviews? What was your process that you went through, right? One of the things we were talking about a lot in the industry is that there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of ads. There's a lot of, um, you know, Instagram sponsored posts. There's Google ads. There's Facebook ads. There's a ton of information coming at people. So people are getting very overwhelmed and they're bouncing from site to site before they actually make a decision. So how do you stay top of mind so that people actually think of you, stay on your site, or remember you and come back and buy? So I thought I'd share the Wayfair example. This was an example that happened this past holiday. So I was looking for nightstands. My husband and I had these nightstands that literally I think I had them since college. I was like, it's time to get rid of them. So I was really excited. I was looking around. I was hopping on Joss and Main, saw some cool nightstands, these white ones. They were simple. They were easy, fairly priced. I was like, this is awesome. Filled my cart with a coat rack, everything else, right? I'd done my research. I'd looked around. I have my cart filled. And then what happens? It hits me. Wayfair sent me a coupon last week for 15% off. You guys, I'm usually the consumer that just buys. I don't think about it. I just go buy. I like to get stuff done very fast. But it hit me that Wayfair had sent me that coupon. So I said, you know what? Let me go check that out and see if Wayfair has the same nightstand. Sure enough, they did have the same nightstand, right? So I went on Wayfair. I filled my cart with the same stuff I had had on Jostin Main. I used my coupon, checked out, and that was it. I bought my stuff through there. And the reason why is because they had stayed top of mind with me, right? They had been able to get a hold of me again. And I think that's super valuable and really, really important. So that's what I want you to think about as we go through today. How are you keeping top of mind um, with your with your customers? How are you making sure that they remember you? And we're gonna talk through some ways to do that just today. So another big problem exists, which is why you are here today, right? 98% of website visitors will leave your site without taking action. You guys, here's the breakdown. You can do the math, but for every 1,000 visitors, that's 980 people leaving without taking action. 10,000, 9,800 leaving without taking action. That means not clicking anywhere, not putting their email address in. They simply came to your site and they bounced off. And I don't know about you, but that's pretty devastating for me. Thinking about in this day and age, we're spending a ton of money on getting traffic to our site right? Getting organic traffic to our site. Maybe you've hired an SEO agency. Maybe you have a paid advertising team that's trying to get traffic to your site, right? You're probably spending a lot of time, energy, and money on doing that. And so now we have to figure out how to keep them there. So why are people leaving your site or not buying? I think it's really important to address this. I just don't want to present a problem to you and they say, figure it out, right? Today's going to be really actionable. We're going to be talking about how to actually address this. Well, first and foremost, you're not giving them a reason to stay on your site, right? And you may be giving them a reason to leave. Now, I have been hearing a lot of this lately when I'm talking to clients and partners. They're talking about software bloat. What the heck is software bloat, right? Well, the problem we're seeing is that so many people are like, well, I have to use the chat software. I have to use this. I have to use this. I have to use this. They're not actually taking the time to see how it looks on their site. Now, every one of these softwares, of course, has opportunity to really get clients to stay on your site, get clients to convert. But the last thing you want to do is overwhelm clients when they come to your site and have a pop up, then a chat software, then your chat bot, um, then a push notification, um, you know, then the person that bought this bought this too, right? That's getting into overwhelm. So all of these things have a place, but what we're gonna talk about today is how do you map out your site and actually make sure things look really good so that when a user gets to your site, they're actually excited to take action. So here's another reason why I oftentimes see people leaving websites, right? Going back to you're not giving them a reason to stay. I see this so often. You get to a site and the offer is join my mailing list. Now this used to work way back, 2000, you know, 
10, 11, 12, even up to probably 2013, 14, 15. But now that people are being bombarded with, hey, give me your information, give me your email address, it's not working as well. So headlines are super crucial um, to actually capturing attention. I'm going to show you today how to write um, awesome headlines as well that capture attention. But you've got to give people more incentive and reason to stay. That's really vital. And then wrong message, wrong page. I see this all the time, right? Perhaps you are um, a, a dog or pet food store and I'm on the dog food page and then I get a savings for 15% off cat food. I'm on the dog food page, I have no desire to get cat food. So really making sure that you're presenting the right message at the right time. And then this is my favorite, this is the software bloat that I was talking about. I see this so often, you guys. I would say 90 to 95% of the sites I go to on a daily basis, I see this, right? There's a notification on top of that, on top of chat bot and everything like that. We need to ensure that we're really not affecting the user experience. In fact, that's oftentimes why pop-ups get a bad rap um, and they work really, really well. However, um, you've got to make sure that you're incorporating them into your user experience, right? You don't want your users to feel overwhelmed. That's what's causing them to leave their site. They get here and they don't know what clear call to action you want them to take, so they bounce. And really, the money, you guys, is in creating a relationship with your website visitors. And we'll talk about how to do that today with these three simple steps. So today, these are the three things that we're going to discuss. Number one, we're going to take a very big step back in your business, okay? We're going to talk about establishing the goal for your website. And I'm going to use uh, multiple examples in these to give you an idea about how I would actually establish a goal for my website. I find oftentimes we're so overwhelmed with getting our marketing out there that we just try to get everything up, everything up, and we don't even think about how it actually all plays in together, right? So I'm gonna talk about exactly how to do that here today. Number two, we're gonna talk about how to create that irresistible free offer on your site that isn't just join my newsletter. Now, you may be saying, Lindsay, I know about the free offer, I know about the lead magnet, okay? Um, I'm sure you probably do, but I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna actually use real examples and show you for three different industries what worked and what didn't work, um, so you can actually see what you can take away and use for your own business. And then from there, you've got to create and iterate, right? You've got to get these opportunities live on your site to make sure that you're like the Wayfair, that you're capturing people's information and making sure that people are coming back to your site again or taking action, the action on your site that you want them to take, okay? All right, well, we'll dive in. I can't see, um, Caitlin, I can't see any chat. I'm not sure maybe if um, I'm, I'm blocked from it, but no worries um, if I'm not well, and people just... Oh. Here, sorry, I saw um, somebody had commented that they don't see the chat, just questions box. So if uh, you pop out the question box, you'll see a lot um, of listeners participated there. Oh, so you know what? I can't see any questions either. <laughs> oh, shoot, sorry. Um, here, we've got manufacturing, architectural services, dog training service, healthcare, engineering services, retail, more manufacturing, a couple e-commerce, professional services, digital marketing consultant. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that's so right. we got all over the board. Okay, cool. <laughs> no worries at all. Okay, well, let's um, just say this. For those of you, if I do not address your industry or, you know, you can't figure out how this could be relevant, make sure to ask um, questions and we'll address them in the end. Um, and I can give some applicable applicable experience or examples so that you feel as though you truly walk away with this with some action steps for your industry. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Kayla. I appreciate it. I was like, I must be missing something. All right, guys. No problem. We'll dive in. Um, okay. So step one for your website, no matter what industry you are in, is you've got to define your goal. At the end of the day, when it comes down to your customer journey, what do you want your website visitors to do, right? What's the main goal for your website? I find oftentimes, and I used to do a ton of business consulting and coaching, and people would say, well, I just have to get a website up, right? And I, I worked with companies anywhere from like heating and cooling companies um, to business coaches, to e-commerce companies, digital marketers. So I've worked on all sides of the business. Um, so they would just say, well, I need to just get my website up. I'm like, well, what's the goal of the website, right? What do you ultimately, at the end of the day, once someone's made it through your website, maybe they've you know, looked at your blog, your about section, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to buy your service? Do you want them to take a trial? Do you want them to call your team um, and you know, talk to one of your sales teams? Um, do you want them to just put in your email address because maybe you make all of your money off of your email marketing, you're a digital marketer and you've got affiliate links? I really want you to think about what the ultimate goal is because 
at that point, then you've got to think about what steps do they need to take to get there and how can I actually put those steps into place on my website, okay? So how can I get them to this purchase point and what does my website have to do with it? And that's what I really want you to think about. So thinking about you know, what your goals are and what you ultimately want them to do is going to be absolutely crucial to your success. So. I'm going to talk about a first example of if I had like a consulting, uh, maybe I have an agency, marketing agency, coaching, something of that sort. So if I had that sort, my ultimate goal would be for them to hire my agency, right? I want them to pay me to coach them, consult for them, or I want to do their digital marketing services, paid ads, SEO, whatever it may be that you're doing. Okay, so if that's your ultimate goal, then how are you going to get them to do that? Now, I wish you could have on your front homepage and say, hey, hire us for $20,000 a month. Probably not the best way to do it, right? So what you need to think about is what do they need to do or see before they're going to ultimately hire you? So let's take, for example, um, we'll take our uh, SEO agency that we have here, for example, right? So we know that um, they actually need to talk to our team. Um, so we put them through like a little questionnaire and quiz to ask what their needs are, what they're looking for, so we can get them in the best direction. And then from there, they get forwarded to our team. Um, another example is perhaps when I used to do coaching consulting, um, and I'll show you an example of this a little later on, um, but again, I knew that somebody wasn't just going to hire me off you know, the bat um, and pay me $5,000 for consulting. So I knew that if I could actually get them to my consultation page and get them to sign up for a free 45-minute business chat with me, I didn't actually need that many leads to get there. I just needed more qualified leads to get there, right? Um, so I really focused on when people got to my website, every call to action, every hello bar that I had, I'm going to drive them to my consultation page. Um, and the offer was a free 45-minute business chat with me. We'll uncover what's happening in the business, what challenges you're facing, and how I can support you, right? Um, so that was, again, thinking about what's the ultimate goal? What do I need to do or say before I can get them there? Now, we have a lot of clients that we work with um, that are in totally separate industries. Maybe they're selling software or they're selling medical device equipment, things of that sort, and they need to get phone calls. Um, so that's another thing, right? So if my main goal is I want them to call us right now or I want them to get a hold of them on the sales team, um, then I'm going to put calls to action solely around phone calls, right? And that's something we actually have in Holobar. We have like a phone call option so somebody could call directly from Holobar. So really, I want you to start to write down right now, what is your ultimate goal? What do you want people to achieve when they get to your website? Um, because one of the challenges I find is that if you don't know your ultimate goal, you'll come into the example that I showed earlier with multiple pop-ups leading people in multiple different places. Okay, here's another example, more e-commerce style, okay? Let's say you're this company, Teeks. Teeks is my favorite company. I'm wearing their shoes right now. They're super comfortable, but they are pretty pricey, right? Like to invest in them, I knew I had to wear them every day. Um, they're a $150 pair of shoes. So let's say you're Teeks and you've got 12,000 pairs of these heritage plaid shoes. So right now your ultimate goal is just to sell out of these shoes, right? You've got to sell out of these heritage plaid shoes. Um, now what's interesting about people coming to Teeks site, Teeks is a brand, it's pretty well known. Um, they are known for their comfort and quality everyday wear shoes. Now where's the disconnect here? If you're trying to sell these heritage plaid shoes on your website, but the users coming to your site are looking for an everyday wear shoe, the heritage plaid might not be the best uh, everyday wear shoe. So how do you sell out of them? Well, there's a few ways you could do it, right? Again, what do they need to do or see before they're gonna buy from you? So you could go with the traditional free shipping, you know, savings, um, maybe you do a quiz, um, what shoe is your shoe type? Um, and I can talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in the free offer section. But what if you thought a little bit more in depth into that customer journey that we showed earlier, right? What if you thought, okay, at what point are they at the buying journey? They're getting here, they're looking for a comfortable pair of shoes. Maybe to get them to do the buy the Heritage Flat shoe, I have to get them to see that the Heritage Flat shoe actually can be an everyday wear shoe. So maybe you put together, you know, a guide that shows them 45 different outfits they could wear with the Heritage Flat shoe. And then they enter their email address, they get the guide, and then you give them a savings after that to come back and buy the Heritage Flat shoe right? Those are the thought process I want to get you to start thinking about. But ultimately, I want you to think about what is that goal for your website so we can make sure all the call to action, all the content around it is driving people to the goal. So the question you need to write down is, one, what is your goal for your website? Two, what do they need to do or see before they 
achieve that goal. So what do they need to do or see before they'll contact your team and call you? What do they need to do or see before you know they'll buy the Heritage Plaid shoe? And what do they need to do or see before they'll buy your course? And we'll talk a lot more about this in the free offer section and some ideas around that. But I want you to jot that down and I want you to start filling in the blank with some ideas of what you think they need to do or see before they'll do that. And this is what happens when you don't have a common goal, right? Going back to the overwhelm, everything's on top of each other, and then users are bouncing. They're leaving because you're not giving them a clear direction, a clear customer journey path. You're not taking them down the path that you want them to go down. Okay, so here's an example, and I wanted to give you another example of something that we did a few years back on the neilpatel.com site. So Neil, at the time, his ultimate goal was to sell this one course. It was the advanced um, AMP course. Um, it was a year-long course where he was teaching um, each week a different module of the course, and this was his goal. It was Everything on his website led to this. All of his ad campaigns led to this. Like This was his one main goal that he was focused on. So he used multiple different marketing channels to get people to buy this product. Okay, so um, what he did is he asked himself the same question, what do people need to do or see before they'll buy from me? He realized, well, if I'm trying to enroll them in a program where they're going to spend a year with me and I'm going to be teaching them, they probably need to see what it's like for me to teach them, right? So he created a webinar that was a webinar with him doing solely content, solely teaching, and then the end, he pitched um, the AMP course. So this was an example of ultimate goal. What did he need to do or see? Every single call to action on his site, it had different text, but it all led to the webinar. The webinar led to the course, right? So that's an example. It was a great way to collect leads. It was also a great way to sell the course. And ultimately, he ended up collecting over 180,000 leads on his site over the year just from the hello bar top bar taking people to this webinar to the course so again thinking about how this can apply in your business so some of you may be saying well Lindsay I have so many different products or so many different things I want to sell so what I always suggest is every 90 days sitting down with your team and actually evaluating what you want to sell and what you want to focus on right maybe your main initiative is to sell these three products or this product or this product um, so what I would say is break that down into pieces so maybe in April you focus on one product May you focus on another June you focus on another right I find that when you do that and you put all of your effort into focusing on that you're gonna see a lot more traction um, in your products and your services or maybe you're like Lindsay I have one product and service that's easy I got it I um, mean if that's the case then great I would really invite you to take a look back at your website make sure that your calls to action are prominent they're on your site they're leading um, to where you want your users to go I can't tell you how many times I see someone with a call goal and the phone number is really small in the corner right um, or perhaps you have an email collection goal but you're really not enticing your users or prompting them to actually put in their email anywhere it's very hidden I can't find your often I find this a lot so again take away from step one what is your goal what do people need to do or see before they um, buy from you and then going back to your website after this training and evaluating it asking yourself are you know is this website leading people down the path i want to lead them down um is it leading them to the ultimate goal really evaluating to make sure and if you're not sure and you're too far deep into it have your team do it or ask some of your users for some of their feedback okay Step two, you guys, is creating an irresistible offer. I love to use this example of Alana from Alana Skincare. She crushes it with this offer. This is actually one of her highest converting offers because she deploys, deploys it only upon exit when someone's leaving her site. And it's like, wait, before you go, here's an extra 10% off your order, right? It works really well. It's really simple. But let's show you how to create an irresistible offer for your business. So I'm going to go through three examples, you guys. Um, and again, if one of these examples does not apply to your business, Make sure to put the questions in the chat. I will address them all in the end. Um, so the first example is for my more digital marketers, um, those that have maybe more even e-commerce brands um, or digital products. So this was an example of something, I'm just gonna skip ahead, okay, perfect. So this was an example of something we did a few years back. So something interesting we ran into as a team is Neil's community said to him, Neil, it's pretty easy for you to talk about getting all this traffic to your website because you've been in the business of getting traffic to your website for over 10 years. Show us how you could get traffic to a website that has zero traffic. So we took the challenge and accepted it. Him and um, our other um, 
the CEO, uh, created a site called Nutrition Secrets. And on Nutrition Secrets, um, they created, they had some digital products that um, were diet plans um, and weight loss programs. And they created those programs and then they were collecting emails on the site, which were ultimately leading people to buy the programs. Okay. So originally they had a few opt ins. They weren't really great. They were super hidden. Um, and they were collecting about 10 emails per day um, as they were growing the traffic to their site. But then they made one simple change. So they decided to use a Hello Bar page takeover, and I'll show you what that looks like shortly upon exit, um, meaning that someone was about to leave the site, just like the Atlanta skincare, right? And they deployed it. And they put together a quiz. So they said, click here to get your quiz um, to decide which diet is best for your personality. So what happened here, right? They took some time. They thought about the users that were coming to the site, what their pain points were. And this is crucial for coming up with your free offer. What are your ideal client's pain points? Why are they seeking you out? Why are they coming to your site? What are they searching into Google, right? Um, and they decided, well, their crucial pain points is that they need a diet that's best for their personality. Um, or they need a diet, that, a weight loss diet, that's what they're looking for, right? So they created a quiz with a software called Lead Quizzes. They used a Hello Bar page takeover where they used what we call a click goal, and I'll show you that shortly. Um, they clicked the button, it took them uh, to the um, quiz, they took the quiz, and they got a plan for their personality type. Now, we went from collecting 10 emails a day to 50 emails a day, right? Same traffic base, just different offer. And why did this work? It's because we understood the pain points of the people coming to our site. We offered them something enticing um, and exciting. And they saw a huge increase as well in the sales of the products because the traffic was more qualified. So that's an example one. An example two would be more for my coaches, consultants, again, agencies, anyone selling any sort of consultation service. So this was an example that I used on my site when I did business coaching. So um, I had, as I mentioned earlier, you know, a form that I had people fill out for a free 45 minute call. Um, so originally I would just have people, I would drive people there. Um, and what I focused on is what did people tell me in all the consultation calls that I had them? What were the pain points that I found that they said? And there were three things that people said to me. They said, Lindsay, I'm really bad at marketing. I really need someone to help me with my marketing. Two, the reason why my marketing is not working is because I'm really bad at social media. So I need someone to help me with my social media. And three, I really want someone to hold my hand and support me every step of the way in the journey. Right. So what I said is, OK, my goal for this website right now is I want to collect more leads. because I don't want to do consulting forever. Like I ultimately want to be a digital brand, but I also want to hire. On, I want to get consulting clients because that's what paid the bills. So I kind of had two goals, right? So I went back to the drawing board, did the same formula I said in step one, thought about my goal, thought about what I, they needed to do or see before they buy from me. And then I realized, okay, so if they're telling me they're really bad at social media, let me figure out how to make it easier for them. So I created this free webinar, which was 30 Instagram posts in 30 minutes. And people absolutely loved it um, because it addressed their pain points and struggles that they were currently dealing with. Um, and I created the webinar, um, and I, I just put it live on the site with the Hello Bar page takeover. This is what a Hello Bar page takeover looks like. So after I created that webinar, um, I got a ton of people signing up for it. And then in the email follow-up after, I said, hey, I know you think that social media is your problem. Um, that may be one piece of the journey, but really what you need is someone to help you figure out your entire marketing plan, hold your hand, give you the step-by-step -step action plan. Does this sound good? Let's let's chat and have a 45-minute free consultation call. So in the emails afterwards, once I collect the email, they'd seen the webinar, I'd warm them up, they'd seen what it was like for me to teach, then it was a lot easier to sell them into my consultation services. So this is an example of like a little different path that you can take, right? Instead of just going straight to the call, you can give them an example of what it would look like to work with you. And then from there, they already are warmed up, they already get to know you, and it's a lot easier to sell them into one of your bigger packages. Um, and remember, I was using problems that they had told me that they had, right? So again, thinking about the pain points that you're hearing over and over again and providing that solution for people. Okay, here's example number three. So this is an example for more of my e-commerce folks who are selling products online. So this was a client of ours that we worked with. It was their name was Cord Buddy. Um, Travis for Cord Buddy actually was on Shark Tank. So he won Shark Tank. He taught the judges on um, live TV how to play guitar with his tool, um, the Cord Buddy. The Cord Buddy helps teach people how to play guitar. And so he got a lot of organic traffic that was coming to his site. But what he was missing is he wasn't actually able to convert that 
traffic into emails. And then ultimately, he wanted to increase his revenue to the product. So this is an example of someone that had a ton of missed opportunities on their site. And this may be something that you're going through. He really had no calls to action to join the email list. Um, it was a little overwhelming as to which route um, people could take to get to the product and to the checkout. Um, so Travis actually came to us and said, I need help. I want to collect more emails and I want to increase my revenue. I said, okay, cool. So what we looked at, uh-oh, that's not good. I think we'll just get right back. Okay, cool. We're back. <laughs> so what we looked at is ultimately, okay, where are the areas of opportunity and what's the goal for the site? So the goal was to twofold, collect more emails and get more sales. So we first started with this little pop-up. We addressed the pain points um, that people were going through. We realized that when people came to Travis's site, he said the biggest thing that was a challenge for them was learning how to play guitar and they were about ready to give up and they just wanted someone to teach them how to play. Um, so we created this, we took one of his most popular blog posts, which was how to teach you how to play guitar in 60 days or less. We put it into a guide and then we put it into his email series, okay? So we collected over a thousand email addresses in the first month with this, just simply putting this page takeover up on his site, right? Um, and so we collected a thousand email addresses and we were getting about a 2% conversion rate. So we addressed the problems people were going through and we created this. Now we decided to switch it up because we knew ultimately if we're going to do this and people had to put in their email addresses, we were collecting email addresses, but we weren't getting exactly the revenue that we wanted. We were getting about $1,500 additional revenue from this specific pop-up. So we made one simple change. We made it what I like to call a click goal. This is a click goal. You don't have to put in your email address, right? And I'll show you what this looks like shortly. Um, but we made it so that users didn't have to put in their email address. They could click the button and they could add the checkout coupon um, upon checkout because we knew ultimately he just wanted to increase revenue. Emails were important, but people were gonna put their email address in when they bought the product. So let's just try to increase the revenue. So we actually got, by doing this, making this one simple change and checking out the email address portion, we increased revenue or we increased the conversion rate by 0.8%. This generated an additional six to $10,000 per month. This was just from Hello Bar, not his overall revenue. So this is a great example of just really understanding his behavior, understanding what the ultimate goal was, and making it easier for people to actually check out and buy the product, which is what we wanted. Um, this is an example of what we use for Neil's AMP um, course that I showed you earlier. So it was very simple, right? Do you want more traffic? Yes or no? Again, we address the pain points of people on his site. They're coming to him because they want to learn how to get more traffic to their site. Um, so this is an example of something you can do. And this is what we like to call a leading question or a yes, no question. This is another feature we have in Huobar that works really well. So which downloadable do you choose, right? You've got the pain points, you've, you know what your ideal client's going through. How do you decide? There's so many different conversations out there around, do you do a video series? Do you do a challenge? Do you do a checklist, ebook? What works? Well, all of these work really well, right? What's most important is actually not the deliverable in terms of how it's delivered. What's most important is a deliverable that's going to give your community value and results. So for example, there was a gal that did I think it's like a seven day smoothie challenge. And she clicked over 30,000 email addresses with doing this smoothie challenge. And people started to find after seven days, they had more energy, their skin got better, they felt really happy. So what do you think they did? They bought her bigger products as a result of it, right? So that's an example of a free offer. It was a free challenge. Um, and it wasn't about you know the challenge per se, it was about what the results the challenges yielded, right? The challenge actually got people results. They felt healthier, their skin was going, they felt happier that's really crucial and that's what I want you to think about when you're thinking about which downloadable to choose um, what do you have that can start to get re people results so maybe it's just a conversation with your team where they map out um, you know missed opportunities and show how your software can provide um, support with that maybe it's a piece of your digital product so maybe module one of your digital product everyone always gets some aha moments so you make that your free offer right I had this offer called the 4w series this was something that I gave to clients before I started consulting with them and they always would email me and say, oh my gosh, this is totally worth the $5,000 already. That's how I knew I had something good. So I created that as a free offer because it was an introductory into my services, right? It got them some quick results, but they still needed the support from me. So that's really what I want you to think about. 
Now let's talk about headlines, right? So the value first is a key with the offer, but then from there, you've got to have a catchy title to get a conversion, right? The text is really crucial. In fact, this is one of the top things we find um, that makes the biggest difference, text, and then just getting it live and testing it, right? And seeing what works and what doesn't. So I always love to use my grocery store tabloids because that's a great place to find headlines. But how the heck else do you find headlines? Well, I always look at sites like BuzzSumo. Um, BuzzSumo will show you the top headlines that are trending Ding. Um, Neil actually has another free tool called Uber Suggest, um, which is really great for looking at, you know, keywords and traffic and getting content ideas and headline ideas. Um, you can also look at social media, right? What catches your attention? Subject lines are my favorite. What subject line catches your attention? I actually always have a swipe document. Um, it's just like a little Excel document where I keep a bunch of headlines that really caught my attention um, and subject lines. That way I can use them in the future. That's a key tip. Um, so here's some headlines, and I want to break down why these headlines work. Okay, here's the first one. How to generate 1,702,148 visitors a month through SEO. So we use this on Neil's site, and the reason why this works really well is because everyone comes to him because they want to learn how to get more organic traffic, right? This doesn't say through paid ads or through spending thousands of dollars on a marketing agency. This says through organic traffic, which is something where people feel like they have control over. The other reason why this works really well is because the 1 million number is very obscure. This is actually taken directly from Neil's Google Analytics. Now, I don't want you to make this number up by any means, but start to think about numbers that you can use. Maybe if you have a recipe set, it's five simple recipes in under five minutes, right? Things of that sort, how we can save you over $100,000 with our tool or our manufacturing services. Really starting to think about things in that manner is going to get people's attention. How to get out of debt in 90 days or less with a simple guaranteed system. I don't know about you, but if I was in debt, I'd feel overwhelmed. I feel like there's no solution to my problem. And if you're telling me I can do it in 90 days or less and you have a guaranteed system, that sounds amazing because people that are in debt are thinking it's gonna take years and years and years to get through, right? Um, so this is another example of a headline and why it works. Notice the number, 90 days, right? That seems doable. You're not telling me in five years or less, you're telling me in this short period of time. Now, you have to be careful with the guaranteed system, especially for my folks that are in the health-centered industry. Um, so you don't want to make any premises um, that you can't back up, um, and you have to be careful about that. So you can do without the guaranteed system and maybe just say this simple system. Why diets don't work and what to do about it. I love this one because this is an example of taking a common belief that everyone has and flipping it on its head. So saying, hey, guess what? Um, this actually doesn't work. So for an example of someone that's using this, they're probably gonna share why diets don't work, but what does actually work um, is lifestyle, creating a lifestyle around a healthy living. That's what works. Let me show you how to create that lifestyle. Um, another example, that I have seen um, with something like this. I actually used it years ago in a subject line, why Snapchat doesn't work um, and why you shouldn't, or I'm sorry, it wasn't Snapchat. It was, oh, I can't even remember the name of the software. Um, all I remember by the end, it was like a video software that came out for a short minute. It wasn't Vine, but it was one of those. Um, so everyone was really excited about it. And I did like a subject line that's like why it doesn't work and wh why you shouldn't use it. I got a lot of pushback on it, but I was like, hey, guess what? You're going out there. You haven't even mastered Instagram or social media, and you're already using all these other platforms. Let's focus on maximizing the platforms you're using. Then you can incorporate these new ones into your um, into your a marketing plan. So just another example. So top tips, you guys, when it comes to your free offer, um, asking a yes, no question, like I showed you earlier, you'll actually generate about 20% to 30% more leads. Journeys, courses convert better than eBooks, right? So a, a, a journey could be like, follow me um, through my journey of trying keto for 30 days. Um, or a course, as I mentioned, could be a part of your digital course. Or maybe you make up a little cool course that, um, you know, actually supports um, the ultimate business and your ultimate goal. The reason why eBooks don't convert as well is because it makes someone feel as though they're going to have to do something. I'm going to have to read to get a solution to my problem. You want to show them that I can support you in getting to solution to your problem fairly quickly. Unfortunately, we're in a very fast paced environment these days. Things are moving quick and people want quick solutions. And then you should offer your lead magnet throughout your blog, website, homepage. Um, and that's what I'll show you in just a second. Very, very crucial to offer your lead magnet throughout your website. And I'm going to show you how to implement that with HelloFire. 
So step three is once you have your goal for your website, you've mapped everything out, you have your offer, you're feeling really good, now let's implement it, right? We've got to get it live. So if we're really going to prevent these people from leaving our site, we've got to get things live and we just have to test it. So there's really three parts. Um, and this is where I like to show a quick tutorial of Hellobar. And then we're going to go into q and I have about six minutes left and then we'll go into the Q&A portion to make sure all of your questions are answered because I haven't been able to see them. So really excited to dive into those. That's actually my favorite part of the training is to make sure you get everything you need today. So this is my little puppy dog, Walter. He's not so little anymore. He's like a year and four months, but this was him when he was a baby. And this is my baby niece, Scotty. So why the heck do I have Walter here at this point? Well, when I think about Hello Bar, when I think about implementing everything we've talked about here today, I really think about utilizing Hello Bar as a simple tool, um, as a sales assistant, right? So Hello Bar is your sales assistant. Somebody gets to your website and you are leaving it to chance that they're going to ultimately call your direct sales team or fill out your online consultation form or buy your product. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to leave anything to chance. So what does Walter have to do with a sales assistant? Well, my husband loves to take Walter, he sells wine, and he loves to take Walter on some of his little um, sales adventures, and I'll call him and ask him how his day is going, and he'll say, oh, it's great, I've got my little sales assistant with me, because he notices he sells a little bit more wine when Walter is there. Some people are a little biased when they see a puppy dog, right? Um, so that's why I always call Hello Bar your sales assistant on Walter, the sales assistant. And really, when it comes to Hello Bar, it's really just assisting people to take them down the path you want them to go down. So I'm just gonna dive in real quick, just a few minutes, I want to show you how you could actually get everything we've talked about here live um, in Hello Bar in just a few minutes, which is great, right? Our goal with this software is to make it as simple as possible because we want to make sure that you are able to actually take your offer, get it up and live, and then see if it works most importantly. Um, and in the end, I'll give you a 30-day free trial of Hello Bar so you can test this out um, of our growth version so you can utilize everything I talked about here today. So when you dive into Hello Bar, first we're going to ask you your goal, right? So we talked about that today. What's your ultimate goal for your website? That's why it's so crucial and so vital. So maybe some of you are digital marketers and you want to collect leads. Again, maybe some of you want to get a phone call, right? This button on mobile will lead directly to a phone call. Um, we've seen a lot of success with this. Maybe you're trying to get people back to your social media site. That's totally possible as well. Perhaps you are trying to target a URL. So that would work for those when I was talking about taking someone to a webinar or consultation form. So you see now they don't have an option for the email address. Um, or maybe you just want to make an announcement. Maybe you know, you're out of this product or you just got this product back in stock. That's an opportunity too. Notice no call to action button, it's just simply that. From there, you can modify your text, you can change the font, you can change the color, um, you can change everything in here. Um, so we'll use, for example, the collect your email goal. We'll just use that for this. So once you decide your goal, um, from there you can actually decide, remember how I said we have more than a bar? You can use the top bar, you can use a modal in the center of the screen, you can use a slider, which can come out to the right or left. You can also use a page takeover. This is what we find converts the best. In fact, you, Google did a ton of research and found that users actually preferred the page takeover upon exit versus the modal, which is funny because I would bet that most of you guys are using modals. Um, most of the websites I see are, but the page takeover works really well. Notice the little X over here, so you can X out. Again, you can modify the text, et cetera. The alert bell is a little bell um, that will ring and can alert people of, um, whatever your message you want to set. So from there, once you've got that, you can change your templates. We've got a ton of pre-designed templates. So you don't have to do the work. You can change out imagery. You can change out color codes. All of that is available. Um, and you'll see that here. You can change buttons. You can go as in-depth um, or as not in-depth as you'd like with your um, with your design. Um, and then from there, once you've got everything ready, your offer's in, you're great, um, you can decide when it displays. So remember how I said upon exit? That means someone's hovering over the URL bar um, and they're about to leave and you show them this. So that's available. You'll notice some delays here. You'll also notice some options to only display when scrolling. I always choose um, this display option after I've looked at my Google Analytics. If you don't have Google Analytics installed, definitely get it installed on your website. It's free um, and really important. And so once I look at my site, I see what people are doing. If I have a high bounce rate, meaning people are leaving, they're part of that 98%, I'm going to most likely use something upon exit. Um, if I notice that people are staying on page for a minute, then I'll probably use the 45 second delay. Timing is crucial. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So once you've decided your timing, then from there you can actually decide your targeting. Cool part about Hello Bar is not everyone has to say, see the same message. So
So maybe you're running ad campaigns and you want people to see certain messages from certain ad campaigns. Maybe you only want certain people to see something on a certain date or if they're from a city or a country. So you could say, hey, everyone in Chicago, I'll be live in Chicago at this event, come visit me, right? So you can specifically target cities with specific messaging. And that's really when we get into making sure people are staying on the site because they're finding what they want to find. And then from there, one of the most common ones we use is URL path is or includes. So maybe you only want to show this on certain blog posts, or you only want to show this on your cat food page or your dog food page, that is an option as well. So that's when you get into our targeting. And then lastly, um, you can integrate this with your email marketing software. We integrate with most major website platforms. So when you collect the emails, you can make sure that it's going down the right funnel so that it's really a seamless journey. But if we don't integrate with your software um, or your email marketing software, we have Zapier and webhooks that can help to integrate. So that's just a little example of what it looks like to um, go live um, and how quickly you can do it. One other thing I'm sorry, I wanted to show you in here um, is if you, um, I'm just going to go to the dashboard. One crucial, crucial thing is testing. And one of the things that's pretty amazing in Hello Bar is we actually allow you to A-B test very simply. So you can see here, um, you simply just go to this little knob and say A-B test, and then you can modify your text, you can modify your imagery. And what's cool is you can see here, we're running an A-B test on this page takeover, which we've been using for a year, and we've actually been able to increase the conversion rate by 0.6%. And then HelloBar tells you that that one is performing best, and you can pause this other one, which is really amazing, right? Um, because it allows you um, to actually see what tests are working, what tests are not, and it, you can do this in just a minute. Um, so that's a little bit more about inside the tool and how you can take everything that we talked about today here and get it live. So our secret weapon, as I mentioned, that works really well for us is the page takeover upon exit. We get an additional 900 signups every single month from this. And it's really simple, you guys. I made this in just five minutes. Um, no imagery, just good text um, with a clear call to action button. And these are the kind of things that you want to start incorporating on your site. These are just a few more, few examples. Again, I made these in just a few minutes in Hello Bar, and that's what I love. It's really seamless and easy. So what does yoga have to do with timing? Well, timing is crucial, right? Remember how I said earlier people are getting to websites and they're very overwhelmed by calls to action. That's why timing is key. So I always love to say when you're thinking about your marketing, when you're thinking about your website, be the Lululemon of timing. Now, what does that mean? When you go into a Lululemon store, you'll notice nobody jumps right at you to try to sell you yoga pants in the first few minutes. If they do, they're definitely not following Lululemon procedures. I work there. I know this. Um, so that's kind of like when someone gets to your website, you don't want to jump at them right away and say, buy this. And that's what's happening when you're displaying pop-ups immediately or not thinking about user behavior and timing, right? So what happens in Lululemon is you go in, someone greets you, then you're looking around. The minute you start looking at a product, they'll wait about 30 seconds before they're going to approach you, right? Timing. Then from there, they'll educate you on the product. They don't just say, buy these yoga pants. They'll say, hey, did you know that these are moisture wicking? And what happens is, you know, the sweat gets beaded and spread apart and they're dry, so you could actually wear them after yoga to the wine bar. That's something I used to say to people, right? So again, they would wait the time and give them um, that education, and then they'd let them keep going. When they saw the clothes pile up, they asked if they wanted a fitting room. Never did they say, buy this now. And that's what I want you to think about with your website. That's why these free offers are so crucial, right? That's why timing is so crucial. Giving them something they need at the right time is what's going to keep people on your site. You're going to keep their interest as long as you continue to think about their pain points, um, you know, gauge them with engaging content, engaging offers, they're going to stay or they're going to take their offer. They're going to keep coming back. They're going to know you for that. So that's what I really want you to think about. So my top timing tips are look in Google Analytics, see what people are doing in your site. If they're bouncing, use an exit on time. If they're staying on page for a long time, use one of our time displays. If you're super advanced and you're using Hotjar or Crazy Egg, which is a heat mapping software, base the timing based on when they're leaving the site. So if they're scrolling a little and leaving, then use our scroll a little function. Now, if all of that is over your head and you're super overwhelmed, just use the upon exit or a slight delay. You'll notice that in Hello Bar, we took out the ability to actually display immediately a pop-up because it was interfering with user experience and we don't want people using that. So if, you're, if you are doing that, change that and use one of our delays, five, 10 seconds. If you're not sure um, what people are doing on your site, at least wait 10 seconds um, and or do upon exit. So those are my top time tips. And at the end of the day, you guys, put yourself in your user's shoes. Ask yourself, again, go on your website, see what's working. Would you take the offer? Is this actually going to take you down your ultimate path that you want them to go down? Remember step one, right? Is this going to get them to the goal? And if you are so deep into this and you can't even 
think about it, ask your customers, ask five customers that they would be willing to hop on a screen share with you and make sure they're your ideal customers and walk them through your journey on your website. Would you do this? Would you do this? Ask for their feedback. What was the ultimate step that you took before you bought from us? So recapping, before we go into Q&A, step one, you've got to define that goal. Have a clear, seamless goal for your website. That alone will make a huge difference and make it very clear call to action on your site to achieve your goals. Step two, come up with that awesome offer, right? I give you a lot of examples today of offers that you could create, but I'm always happy in Q&A to chat more about different offers. And step three, just get it live and test it, you guys. We could spend hours and hours, and in fact, I used to on free offers, and then I would find that the ones that I didn't think would convert, totally converted. So just get it up and live, you can do. I'm gonna give you a free trial of Hello Bar. Um, on us and I'll put the link in the URL so that you can test it out and try it um, and you can actually take everything we've talked about here today and implement it. So Caitlin, I'm going to hand it over to you for Q&A because I can't actually see the questions. I want to make okay. sure that we get everything answered and then I'll put the uh, link in the chat for uh, the free trial. Okay, awesome. So um, for starters, we've got Donald and he asked in the Cord Buddy example, the coupon code was on the pop. What is the incentive to send me my savings? And if clicked, where did it go? Yeah, great question. Um, so with the cord buddy example, we were just really focused on getting people to check out because um, that's where we were knowing we were noticing like 90% dropout. Um, so we weren't as focused on getting email addresses after the first month. Um, so what we found was people just clicked the goal, they went there, so they went to check out, and then they just pasted. Um, they actually pasted the coupon code into the checkout and then they applied it there. Now, if you are more concerned with, I want to, you know, make sure people don't get, you know, they don't get it there. They have to put in their email address, like make it a little bit more challenging. That's totally fine. Um, you can just say enter your email address to get, you know, X, Y, and Z, 10% uh, discount code, free shipping whatever it may be. And that's actually what I see most e-commerce companies doing. Um, this was kind of just a test for us to see if we could really drive the revenue up. And that's why we selected it that way. Coming soon with Halobar, we're working on actually getting coupon codes automatically populated into checkout. So you won't even have to put it on there. Um, and then it'll um, actually work with your e-commerce provider to um, actually generate new codes. Um, so you can have different codes. That's coming soon in our product roadmap. But for now, it's kind of two options. It depends on your ultimate goal. And if you want to make it more challenging for them, that's totally fine to have them put in their email address. Okay, awesome. Um, Bob asked, what are those websites for what is trending? Ah, uh, yes, Buzz Sumo. Um, so this is one, Buzz uh, Sumo. You can still see my screen. Dot com. This is a great one. Um, you can find headlines. Um, you can just type in um, different content that you're looking for. And then Neil's actually new tool, which is really amazing, is called Uber Suggest. I love this, you guys. I've been using this for a lot of my content. And here's the URL. I'll just go ahead and put these in the chat as well. I think, Caitlin, these just go directly to you. So if you don't mind popping them out, this would be awesome. These are the sites. Awesome. Yep, I can put that in. Um, and then while I'm doing that, <clears throat> excuse me, Jeffrey asked, I thought Google didn't like full page pop up takeovers. And how does the upon exit work on mobile? Yeah, great. It's like the number one question I asked. So this is a common question, Jeffrey. So um, there was a lot about two year and a half ago, two years ago, there was a lot of talk about um, them not liking full page takeovers and not like getting penalized on mobile. Um, we've done a ton of research and it's full page takeovers are completely fine. Um, they're not creating penalizations or any of that sort. And Jeffrey, I'll even put um, in our email address. Um, if you want to send us a note, um, I can go ahead and send you the article that actually breaks that entire down. Uh, in, that breaks everything down around that because that's like the number one question we ask or get asked. Um, and, and we're very big, like we actually stopped mobile for a year um, when we were worried about penalization and did a ton of testing and then found that there weren't any issues with it, um, nor are there any issues with the page takeover. Um, in fact, that's what we use on Neil's site, that's what we use on our site. But 
um, I'm happy if you want to send me an email, I put the email address in there. I'm happy to send you the article that kind of breaks that down. And then the second question on mobile, um, so very similar to desktop, if they are up here, um, you know, if they, with mobile it's a little different, right? You're using your finger to tap up, so I don't, I can't have a, I'm looking on my phone right now to show you that example, but if somebody is on your mobile device and they, end, they, they click up into the URL bar um, to actually hit to type something else or to go somewhere else, that's when it deploys. So kind of a little different, right? Because we can't tell if they're hovering over the URL bar like we can with desktop. We can certainly tell when they hit the URL bar and they're about to type something else. Okay, thank you. Um, Tabitha asked, how do you integrate this to the website and how long does the integration take? Such a great question, Tabitha. Um, so um, there's a few different options. Um, so the installation should only take five minutes max. Um, for WordPress, we have a plugin, very, very simple um, to install the plugin. For other sites, it's literally from Squarespace to Shopify um, to most major platforms. Wix, we have a direct integration, um, but Squarespace, Squarespace, Shopify, or any other sites, we don't have a direct integration. There is a snippet of code that you just place um, in your header and body, um, and we have very um, great instructions for all different platforms, and it should only take five five to six minutes max, and if there's any issues along the way, our support team helps. Um, but once you, <clears throat> excuse me, do that install, from there, you actually don't have to log into your website again. You will log into HelloBar and do everything from our dashboard. Um, so again, super easy. We integrate with even now, you know, Kajabi, Teachable, all of those. Um, you just simply can just place the script um, in one of those, and it works really well. Okay. Perfect. Um, Judith asked, how do you adjust the keywords and backlinks for when you adjust the quarterly goals? Yeah, that's such a great question. So that would definitely be more of, that's not like my best wheelhouse on SEO. We have a team here that really focuses on that. Um, so I would not want to misguide you or lead you, Judith. Um, but I think ultimately, like when you're looking at, you know, keywords and what you're trying to rank for, um, it really should go hand in hand with the products that you're trying to sell. Um, so obviously, you know, a great example is we rank for this post that's like um, how to get more Twitter followers, but it has nothing to do with Hello Bar, right? So like to us, that keyword actually isn't a crucial focus, but what is a crucial focus is converting, you know, email conversion rates or, you know, pop-ups to convert to emails, like keywords that we know are really going to lead people to ultimately buying the product. That's what's super crucial for us. Um, so I would say, you know, really just working with your SEO team um, or if you don't have an SEO team, just working within that strategy and just making sure that like when people get to your website, it's a really clear um, journey. Like someone's not going to get to our website and see, you know, the post immediately about the Twitter followers. Right. So making sure that, you know, your keywords really tie hand in hand into the products that you're ultimately trying to sell because you want to make sure that those keywords have buyer intent. Um, otherwise, it's, you know, not. And again, I'm not, I'm not the SEO expert, so I don't want to go too far in depth of that and steer you the wrong way. But I would just say really just thinking about, so if your S, like whatever your SEO strategy is, making sure that when someone gets to the website, it really is a seamless customer journey and it's taking them ultimately down the path of where you want them to go. Perfect. Thank you. Again, um, a couple of people asked what the link was for the 30-day trial. Um, I put that in there, but just for everyone else, it's hellobar.com slash promotions. Exactly. And the email was support at hellobar.com. Totally, yep, yep. And just send them a note and say, you know, you're interested in, um, I work hand in hand with our support team. So um, I'll make sure after this, I'll hop off and make sure that they have that um, link for um, the, the questions around Google penalizing for the pods. Okay, thank you. Um, Charlene asked, do you have an agency or reseller program? How can I use this for multiple clients? Charlene, we sure do. Um, so glad that you asked that. Um, we do have an agency program um, where we, um, allow, we sell you the software at wholesale so that you can resell it to clients. Um, we have a few different parts of that program from software only to we help with the management side, we help with the custom setup side, the writing of headlines, everything of that sort. Um, I'll also put my email address for those that are interested in learning more about the agency or reseller program. Send me an email and I can go ahead and hop on the phone with you and chat more about that. But we 100% do, and we've been working hand in hand with a good amount of agencies and seeing some great success with it. 
Awesome. Thank you again. I um, put your email address in there. It's lindsay at hellobar.com and lindsay Perfect. with L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then Roland asked, what is pricing for Hellobar software? Yeah, great question, Roland. So um, there's a few different options. Um, we have a free plan that's super limited. Um, it doesn't allow for the targeting that I showed you. You are limited on um, the amount of view counts and A-B testing, but you certainly could use that. Um, the one that's the 30-day free trial that I'm giving you guys is our $29 a month plan. Um, so that's our growth plan. Um, that gives you up to 50,000 views a month, as well as um, full access to our targeting features and then also access to um, our templates, uh, more enhanced templates, as well as um, unlimited A-B testing. And then from there, we have a $99 plan, which is for people getting um, over 100,000 uh, view count, and, um, or I'm sorry, over 50,000 view count. So uh, 50,000 to 500,000 view count. And on that one, you get access to our premium support. We have some more premium templates and integrations, um, and then you're able to have a higher view count. So those are the main plans. If your traffic is above 500,000, we have custom plans that we've put together to be able to support you in, in that as well. And we can certainly talk to you about that, but those are kind of the breakdown of it. Perfect. And it looks like um, Kenny asked about a link to the webinar. Um, Main Street ROI will actually send out a link to everyone with the link to the webinar and the PDF of the slides as well. Um, and then we've got time for one more question. Um, Roland again asked, how many maximum email can I send out monthly for $29 plan? Great question, Roland. So actually with Hellobar, um, we, you don't send out the emails through Hellobar. You would still need to integrate it with your email marketing platform. Um, so that would be dependent on which platform you're using. Um, but I know things like MailChimp, um, you know, they have up to like 2,000 users free, I believe. ConvertKit, super fairly priced um, and super easy to use software. In the future, Roland, um, sneak peek, uh, we're working on some potential ways where you can actually email within Hello Bar 2. That way it can be more of an all-in-one solution. Um, things aren't solidified on the plans, but that's something to look forward to. Um, and however, in terms of collecting emails, you can collect unlimited emails. Um, so what happens in Hello Bar is if you notice in this section, there's a contact section. This is where we store all of your contacts um, so that you could download it from here and import it into your email provider. Um, you see like all the contacts that are stored in here. Um, but what happens is you integrate with your email provider, it sends it to your email provider. Um, and then it's, you know, based on how many emails they'll let you send. Um, but if you don't have one, you could certainly come in the back end here, export the emails and import them into wherever you want to. And that's unlimited. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, yeah. Again, for anyone um, who has additional questions for Lindsay, her email is lindsay at hellobar.com. You can also email support at hellobar.com, or if you send them over to Main Street ROI, um, we can also shoot them over to Lindsay. So Wonderful. That, yeah, that is going to wrap up. Thank you all so much for joining today's webinar, and thank you to Lindsay for this great information and all the information on your secret weapon as well. As a reminder, we will be sending out the replay of the video and the PDF of the slides, so look out for that. Shoot us over any questions. Um, and Main Street ROI is actually having another webinar next week, so check out that one as well if interested. But thank you all for coming, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut down now.